Can you etch glass with color? In today's Cricut tutorial for beginners, we're about to find out, so let's get crafty. Hey, I'm Michael, and this is Mr. Crafty Pants, where I show you crafty tips, tricks, and tutorials basically every single week. So if you're new around here, consider stamping that subscribe button and while you're at it why not go ahead and consider ringing that little bell for all of the notifications because y'all do not i repeat you do not want to miss out on a single crafty or cricket minute especially during craftoween so during craftoween i am putting out a ton of cricket halloween projects and at the exact same time, I'm giving you a ton of chances to get registered to win an awesome, awesome prize package. I'm giving away two Cricut Maker 3s, as well as two StarCraft Mint Clamshell heat presses. One for you and one for a friend as well. I'm also throwing in a bunch of other little goodies. So to get registered, make sure that you check out the description down below. But every craft win video that you watch this year, is a brand new chance for you to get registered. So do not miss out on a single one of those. Now y'all, today we are actually, we're actually etching glass. Now this is a video that I've done before, but I have never ever done this by actually adding in color to the etched glass. Cannot wait to show you all all about this. It is so, so, so much fun. So the things that you're gonna to need to make all this Cricut magic happen is obviously some glass, right? And I am actually using these rock glasses right here. Now, you do not need to use anything fancy if you don't want to. Literally, this is from Marshalls. And on top of that, it was on clearance for like $3. I am also using etching glass cream or etching, yeah, etching cream for glass. And that is the Armor Etch brand right here. We will also need some, like a little paintbrush of sorts to actually apply the etching cream. I will also be using some rub and buff to actually add in some of that color. We will also need a stencil vinyl. So I am using the Star Mask by Starcraft, their stencil film vinyl. This stuff is really, really good. You can also use a permanent vinyl if you don't actually have a, a stencil mask vinyl. We will also be needing a transfer tape and truth be told, in this episode, I'll be using the brand new StarCraft transfer tape for the very first time. So y'all will find out together whether I like it or not. I mean, there's a there's a lot at stake here. Y'all already know that the clear medium tech transfer tape is like my all time favorite. So me testing this out, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous, but we'll see if it's good or not. And uh, last but definitely not least, we will need a design to actually etch into the glass. So let's go ahead and head over to designbundles.net. Now, I personally think that these little skulls right here will make a really, really cool design once it is actually etched into the glass. And I'll be showing you exactly how I'm gonna go about doing that. So make sure that you stay tuned until the very end of today's episode. But these are currently marked down at the time of filming this from $4 down to $2.40. It is currently 40% off. Fingers crossed, hopefully they will be the exact same price once you go check it out yourself. But you can also use my discount code with designbundles.net or fontbundles.net. And that discount code is Mr. Crafty Pants. And this, as well as everything else that I'm using in today's episode, will be listed and linked with, with discount codes, if applicable, down in that description box below. So again, make sure that you check that out. But let's go ahead and head over now to Cricut Design Space and we'll get started with this project. Now, as you can see here, I have already downloaded this file from designbundles.net and uploaded it into Cricut Design Space. Now, if you are brand new to the Cricut world and you're not entirely sure how to download those files and how to get those into Cricut Design Space, I got you covered. I have a step-by-step -step video that I will link for you right up here, as well as down in that description box below. But as you can see, this is a very, very large file. So first thing I'm gonna do is come down here towards the bottom left of the page and then just zoom out like so. Now there are a few different variations of this file, but I'm really just wanting to go for this one right here in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to the right hand side of the page to that layers panel. And I can basically just go through here and basically hide the layers that I'm not wanting for this project. So I can come down here and hide this layer like so. 
this skull we know that we're not gonna be using. This skull right here we'll actually keep. And then these down here, it looks like these are all part of the skull over here on the left-hand side of the page. We don't need any of those, so let's go through and actually hide those. Now, something that I find to be pretty interesting is there is like this full skull right here, but if you take a look up here towards the top of this layers panel, there are additional layers for the eyes and the nose. Like, I guess maybe if you just want the eyes and the nose without the outline, not entirely sure, but we'll go through and actually hide those as well. All right, so what we're gonna do now is go ahead and take down the size that we need our design to be on the actual cup itself. So let me go ahead and just grab a little tape measure. And just taking a really quick look at this right here, I'm thinking the max height of our design should be right around two and a quarter inches. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to Cricut Design Space, click on our design right here. And then we'll come up here towards the top of the canvas, right up here where it says size. And I'm gonna go ahead and change that height to be 2.25. Hit enter and as you can see, it automatically resized that for us although it is kind of small on our screen now since we zoomed out earlier. So let's go ahead and zoom back in by coming down here towards the bottom left-hand side of the page and then clicking on this little arrow right here. There we go. Now, what I'm wanting to do is actually create a background for our design that we will then use as a mask of sorts whenever we're applying our design to our cup right here. Now, this will make a little bit more sense here in just a second once you actually see it being applied. For the time being, I'm gonna go ahead and open up a shape and I'm gonna do that by coming over here to the left-hand side of the page, clicking on shapes. And for this, I'm gonna set this up as a circle. And as far as the size of the circle goes, I am gonna go ahead and just take down the measurements of the entire cup, the entire height of the cup. All right, so for that, it's actually looking right around three and a half inches. So what I'm gonna do is come in here and just change this to be three and a half inches. And we'll do that by coming up here, right up here where it says size. And whether it be with the width or the height, it doesn't really matter because that little padlock is locked. And that means whatever we change the width to be, uh, since this is a shape, it will go ahead and change the height to be the exact same size as well. So let's go ahead and put in here 3.5, hit enter and there we go. All right, so what I'm also gonna do is right click this and then select send it back. And we're basically just gonna kind of set this up behind our design, but to make sure that everything is centered, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and click and drag over that circle and over that skull. And then I'm gonna come up here towards the top of the canvas right here where it says align. And I'm wanting to come down here and select center, just like that. Now, while both of these designs are still selected, what I'm wanting to do is go ahead and come down here towards the bottom right hand side of the page and I'm gonna go ahead and click on Slice. And Slice is essentially like a cookie cutter. And the reason we want that is because we actually want the outline of the skull to be etched into that glass. So to do that, as you can see with this little, this little mask, this circular mask, this now has the outline of that skull in it. So we can actually basically cut this out onto that stencil foam vinyl, apply it to our cup right here, and then we can actually apply that etching cream and that circle that's around our skull will actually protect any other part of that cup from getting the etching cream on it. Now, as far as this goes over here, the remnants of what we sliced out and our original design, we don't need either of those anymore. So what we can do is just click and drag over both of those and then come up here and then select this little X. Or we could even come over here to the layers panel and then just click that little eye icon to the right of each of those layers and basically just hides those and it won't cut it out. But I know that I'm not gonna need this, so I'm gonna go ahead and just delete it out. All right, so as far as this goes, what we're gonna do is go ahead and just cut this out. So it's pretty simple. All we'll do is come up here towards the top right hand side of the page, click on make it. All right, so since I am using a Cricut Maker 3, now if you're using a Cricut Maker 3 or a Cricut Explore 3, you will see this page right here. So it's asking us if we're gonna cut this out on a mat or without a mat. Since we are not using a Cricut Smart Material, we're gonna cut this out on a mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and select on mat and then select done. And this is just the mat preview screen. It's just showing us where at on the mat our design's gonna be cutting out. Now, if you were using most types of HTV, then you could also use this page to come down here and mirror your design, but we're not doing that today. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and just come down here towards the bottom right-hand side of the page and click on continue. 
All right, so here is our cutting mat. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and apply the stencil film vinyl to the mat. And what I'll do is actually leave this all on to the roll itself. We'll go ahead and cut it out and then we'll actually trim around our design once we're all done. Now before we actually load this into the machine, I'm gonna go ahead and come back over here to our screen. And we'll go in here and basically select the type of material that we're using. Now obviously Cricut Design Space does not have a setting for the Starcraft Star Mask Stencil Vinyl. So what we're gonna do is find something that would be similar. So for this, I'm gonna go ahead and come in here and select a Premium Vinyl Removable Mat. And we'll go ahead and just load this into our machine. Then we'll just go ahead and hit that go button and it'll start cutting. All right, so it is all done cutting. So I'm gonna go ahead and unload this. And y'all should pretty much all know the drill by now if you've been around here on this channel. Whenever I am actually removing my material from my cutting mat, I always like to flip that mat over and then peel that away from our material. It just really helps prevent any damage from occurring to your material. All right, so now we'll go ahead and just trim out our design from the rest of the vinyl here. Now, as far as weeding this out, I definitely want to keep that mask intact. So I'm basically going to just go in here and remove everything else, just knowing that we're creating a stencil and then whatever we're leaving behind in the center of that mask will then end up on our actual cup. I'm first just going to go ahead and remove the outer edge or the outer border around that mask. And here is our little stencil right here. I mean, how cool is that? So what we're gonna do now is go ahead and pull off some transfer tape, apply it to this, and then we'll actually transfer this over to our cup. Now currently this transfer tape is sticky side up and remember, this is also my first time ever using this brand new StarCraft transfer tape. So we'll cross our fingers, hold our breath together and pray to the crafting gods that this all works out. I'm gonna go ahead and just place my little stencil foam vinyl face down onto the sticky side of that transfer tape. And then we'll go ahead and just trim out our design from the transfer tape. Now, if you did wanna go ahead and just cut out a piece of transfer tape first and then apply that down to the vinyl, you could do it that way. This is just my own personal preference. All right, so now I'm just grabbing a little squeegee tool and we'll go ahead and just burnish this transfer tape down to that vinyl. And just for good measure, we'll flip it over and then do the back as well. All right, so what we'll also do now is go ahead and actually wipe down our surface before we actually apply our vinyl to it. Now, making sure that we have a really good clean surface is gonna be the best bet for an absolute perfect transfer of this vinyl. So I'm just grabbing some isopropyl alcohol, this stuff right here, and we'll wipe down our glass. Now the towel that I am using to wipe this down with is a lint-free shop towel. So this is again, just a personal preference. I wanna make sure that I don't get any lint or anything onto that glass. And for me personally, this is the best way to go about doing that. And basically what this is gonna do is just strip away any dirt, oil, grease, grime, basically anything that's gonna get in the way of getting a really good transfer of your vinyl. You really wanna do this with almost any type of vinyl transfer onto a smooth, hard surface. All right, so that should be good to go. Now, I already know that this vinyl is not gonna lay down completely flat onto a very curved surface like this, this cup right here. However, I do know that we can actually help out the process pretty significantly by actually just going around the border or the perimeter of this vinyl and actually putting in a little slits into that transfer tape and into the vinyl itself. Now you don't wanna to go too far in with the slits onto the actual vinyl itself because remember, we are using that glass etching cream to actually go over this outline of the skull right here. And obviously the, the further in our little slits are, the more likely it is to actually get that glass etching cream where we don't want it to be on that cup. All right, so that right there should do the trick. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and flip this over and then peel the backing paper off of that transfer tape and off of that vinyl. Just, uh, just keep in mind that it can be a little tricky maybe getting this all off since we did put the little slits into it. And also, honestly, in retrospect and in hindsight, it probably would have been better to go ahead and actually remove the backing paper first and then put the slits directly onto that transfer tape and the actual vinyl itself. There 
there we go that wasn't too bad at all and hopefully you can see that there are all these little sluts surrounding the the mask of our stencil so what we're going to do now is go ahead and apply this down to our cup but I do think, however, that I am going to go ahead and grab a little bit of assistance with a cup holder. And I am just using this one right here. This is from Chipped Builds. And what I'll do is go ahead and link this down in that description box below as well. But this is a really cool little tool to use whenever you are trying to apply vinyl very specifically to something like a cup. All right, so this one is actually just a little bit too small. Let me grab the bigger one. All right, so here we go. This one should do the trick. Perfect. All right, there we go. So we have the center portion of this design applied down to our cup. Now what we wanna do is focus on getting the rest of this vinyl laying as flat as possible onto this cup. Now, we're not shooting for perfection. What we are shooting for though, is to make sure that every little edge of that vinyl that is surrounding our stencil is laying as flat as it can be onto that cup so that we're not gonna get any leakage or seepage of that glass etching cream up underneath of that stencil. All right, so we do have most of this vinyl down onto that cup, but what I am gonna do is go ahead and start working on getting this transfer tape up. And then from there, we'll go ahead and work on getting that vinyl positioned onto that cup as flat and as smooth as possible. And remember, whenever we are going through and smoothing this out, our main goal here is to make sure that every little edge that is on the border of the stencil, we want that to be as flat and as smooth to the surface as possible. All right, so this is far from perfect, but again, it really wasn't meant to be. So as you can see, here is our stencil vinyl onto our glass. And there are like little buckles and little bubbles around the outer perimeter of our stencil. But as far as where the edges go, where the actual glass etching cream will be coming in contact with that glass, all of those edges, as, as far as I can see anyway, are smooth and laying flat onto that glass, which will also help prevent any of that glass etching cream from seeping up underneath of that and actually ruining our design. All right, so Armor Etch Glass Etching Cream. Now, whenever I'm using this, I will obviously take all precautions. I'm gonna be using some safety glasses, a safety mask because it says do not inhale, and I will also be wearing some rubber gloves as well. Now I do wanna make sure that I shake up the Armor Edge pretty good to get that all mixed up inside. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just use this little brush to go ahead and dip into the Armor Edge that is inside of that cap and then apply a very, very thin layer of that to our stencil. Now for about five minutes or so, I'm just gonna keep that Armor Edge moving. Occasionally I'll go back and dip in for just a little bit more to add to it, but I really just wanna keep that Armor Edge constantly moving for about five, six minutes or so. Now once that five to six minutes is up, what I like to do is go ahead and just apply one last thin layer to it and then let that sit for about 10 minutes. From there, I am just gently washing the armor edge off of this cup under cold water and then slowly and gently peeling off that stencil film vinyl as well. All right, so you really couldn't see this design too well whenever it was wet. And you know, even with these bright lights in here, it's not helping a whole, whole lot, but you can definitely see that design a little bit better. But what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and add some rub and buff to this. And what that's gonna do is actually add some color to that etched glass area. And I am using the gold leaf color from rub and buff. Again, everything that I use or mention in today's video will be listed and linked for you down in that description box below. I'm just gonna squeeze out just a little bit onto my fingertip and then just start buffing away at this. And now I'm gonna go in here with paper towel and then start trying to buff some of that off. Now, if you liked today's episode or maybe you learned something new, consider taking two seconds to stamp that like button as well as drop a comment down in the comment section below. 
both of those things are absolutely free to do and it honestly helps me out so 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 much here on youtube and i just honestly could not be more grateful for everyone who takes the time to do that now while you're at it if you are new around here to this channel you may also want to consider stamping that subscribe button as well as ringing a bell for all of the notifications because i put out new crafty tips tricks and tutorials every single week and you do not want to miss out on a single crafty or cricket minute, especially during Craftoween. So again, make sure that you check out all of the Craftoween details. It is listed for you down in that description box below. And who knows, you could win two Cricut Maker 3s and two StarCraft Mint Clamshell heat presses, one for you and one for your friends, as well as a whole bunch of other goodies as well. Thank you all so much for watching today's episode. I honestly could not be more grateful. I love all y'all to the freaking moon and back. And until next time, stay crafty.